up. Wait, Come wait, to the wait, House wait a second. Eight wait. times or at least once in regards to I the just, president wait. specifically. Hold on a that second. That's what you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Come, Ed, please. A little respect here, please. So every year around the, the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. That is answering that question. No, it's not. No, it is. It is. Yes. You're Dr. asking Kevin me. Dr. Kevin Kennard, come I to the White cannot, House. But I, just, and I also said to you, conditions. Ed, I also said to you, for security reasons, we cannot share names. It is public, it's public I, information. I, I, I it hear you. I, and you're going to allow guys, this to guys, career, guys, unless the White House guys, answers the question. Hold on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this aggressive way. We are around here about how information has been shared with the press corps what you, about him. What are you missed about? Please I never answered answer. the question incorrectly. That is not true. I was asked about a medical exam. I was asked about a physical. That was in the line of question that I answered. Dr. Kevin Kennard. And I am telling you right now that I am not sharing confirming names from here. It is a security reason. I am not going to do that, Ed. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me. Okay, so Mike Johnson, along with other House leaders like Chip Roy, Elise Stefanik, they came out yesterday and declared Joe Biden unfit for office. They were doing their Republican press briefing and they made an open declaration that the GOP is recognizing that Joe Biden should not be commander in chief, he should not be in charge of the news. This man is unfit to be president of the United States. One of the reasons why this is coming out now, even though it should have came out years ago, is because a couple of days ago, a bombshell report surfaced that an expert in Parkinson's has been visiting the White House eight times in the last eight months. So let's take a look at this short clip talking about what happened. There is a new development surrounding President Joe Biden and whether he'll be able to stay in the race for another term in the White House. It's now known that a top Parkinson's disease specialist met with President Biden's physician at the White House earlier this year. White House visitor log show Dr. Kevin Kennard visited the White House at least eight times since last August. Three of those visits occurred this year, including one mid-January where he met with the White House physician. The White House is now coming out swinging. We saw at the beginning how Karine Jean-Pierre, the woke diversity hire, is combating the press. She's finally dealing with a hostile press the way that the Trump administration dealt with a hostile press. And she's getting all antsy, banging on the board, raising her voice, stuff like that, because they're trying to defend the indefensible. We have hard evidence of a Parkinson's disease expert visiting the White House, but they won't tell us who it was. She's trying to deflect. Just admit what the hell is going on with this senile old man. They don't want to talk about it, so we're left to come up with our own conclusions. They're coming out swinging hard, like I said. So now the White House has pushed its doctor, Joe Biden's doctor, to release a report saying, oh no, this is all false. Forget anything that you thought. If Joe Biden looks old and senile, if he's exhibiting symptoms of Parkinson's disease, it's not true. He doesn't have it at all. So let's take a look at this report. Begin, though, with a defiant President Biden pushing back very forcefully against pressure to drop out of this presidential race. On live TV yesterday, he dared anyone in his party to challenge him for the nomination. And now he is winning some key support from members of Congress. Also this morning, the administration is clarifying why a neurologist made multiple visits to the White House. Nancy Cordes, of course, is following all of this. Nancy, good morning. There are so many questions today. Good to see you. Good morning, Gail. And now we have some answers. Late last night, the president's personal physician released this letter stating that a neurologist who has visited the White House repeatedly over the past year was not here to care for President Biden and has been treating patients from time to time in the White House medical unit for the past 12 years. The Biden camp making the case aggressively Monday that it is now time for the party to move on. President Biden made it through Monday without any new Democratic defections and with some key backing from his party's House leader. I support President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. 
and from high-profile progressives like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The matter is closed. He is not leaving this race. He is in this race, and I support him. It came after Biden himself turned up the heat on Democratic doubters Monday with a defiant appearance by phone on cable news. If any of these guys yeah. don't think I should run, run against me, go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me in the convention. He also sent a two-page letter to congressional Democrats, insisting it's time for this debate over his health to end. Has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication for Parkinson's? No. White House officials initially declined to say Monday why Dr. Kevin Kennard, a neurologist and Parkinson's specialist, had visited the White House eight times in eight months. I am not sharing confirming names from here. It is a security reason. But late last night, the president's personal doctor revealed that while Dr. Kennard was the neurological specialist that examined Biden for each of his annual physicals, President Biden has not seen a neurologist outside of his annual physical, and that Kennard sees a variety of patients and problems when visiting the White House medical unit. Look, if we finally beat Medicare, Several Senate Democrats said yesterday they want more time after last month's debate to see how things go for Biden. I think um, a lot of folks are raising some questions. They need to get asked, but at the end of the day, we got to beat Donald Trump. Congressman Adam Smith is one of the nine House Democrats who say they've seen enough. We would be better off with another nominee, okay? I believe that in my heart, my soul, my brain. I'm 100 percent convinced of that. Biden's opponent, Donald Trump, has been keeping a low profile without any public appearances in 11 days. He resurfaced last night in an interview with Sean Hannity on Fox News. It looks to me like he may very well stay in. He's got an ego and he doesn't want to quit. Today, President Biden addresses foreign leaders at the NATO summit taking place here in Washington, D.C. And on Thursday, he's going to hold a rare press conference there, which will be another big test as he works to convince his party and the public that he's fit to run for re-election. Now, the American people are left to come up with their own conclusion. You can use your common sense. You can use your reasoning. Is anything going on cognitively, neurologically with Joe Biden? Does he exhibit symptoms of dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, something's going on, anything? You can use your common sense and say, yeah, there's definitely something going on. This man is unspit, clearly some type of cognitive decline, dementia. And dementia is often part of Parkinson's disease in the late stages. Something's going on. Or you can just say, the White House is correct. There's nothing to see here. If there was a neurologist, an expert in Parkinson's coming, oh, he's probably coming to see somebody else. He was probably coming to play cards. You know, they've played dominoes and spades in the White House, chilling, eating ice cream. Maybe the neurologist and Joe Biden are best buddies and he's just visiting to hang out. <laughs> so now Mike Johnson and them, let's take a look at what they have to say because they're saying that we need to make sure that Joe Biden is kicked out of office this fall because he's completely unfit for office. There is no longer any doubt that Joe Biden is unfit to be our commander in chief. The Biden White House, far left House Democrats and the mainstream media are in complete disarray because they know this to be true and have been caught participating in one of the greatest media cover ups in American history. For the last three and a half years, House Republicans and the American people have been demanding details about Joe Biden's mental and physical decline. But every time we raise these legitimate concerns, far our left Democrats and their loyal stenographers in the mainstream media rushed to Biden's defense, claiming that the clearly diminished Joe Biden was as sharp as ever and accusing us of peddling conspiracy theories. The cover up is over and accountability is here. For years, House Republicans have known that Joe Biden is unfit for office. We also know that he will go to any lengths to maintain his grip on power. This is why it is so crucial that we take every possible measure to ensure that the 2024 presidential election is free from election interference and is constitutional. They're chasing down our Democrat colleagues and asking them about Joe Biden's mental acuity and their efforts to uh, cover it up. And that's what it's been. I mean, we could give you example after example after example. It's all on tape. It's all on record. Everybody knows it. Democrats, our colleagues for three and a half years, have been covering up this 
glaring problem. The, the staff in the White House have been covering it up, and so have the Democrats in Congress. Uh, just last month, I brought a couple of examples. Representative Dan Goldman said Biden was sharper than anyone he'd spoken to and that he has, quote, a photographic memory, unquote. Representative Eric Swalwell said that Biden put many of us to shame with his energy. I mean, there, there are example after example after example, leading Democrats and, and noteworthy Democrats on the Hill who have not been in the dark about this. They've been saying things I think most of them understand is simply not true, and they've misled the American people. Uh, most of the Americans' uh, people understand that, that Joe Biden is not fit for that office, and it's a, 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 a terrible thing. The Democrats have misled us, and they need to be held account, accountable for that. The SAVE Act, which will be on the floor that you've heard about this morning, it's a very important piece of legislation. Um, they're claiming to oppose the bill because they say it's going to make it harder to vote, but they know, they know that that is not true. Many of the Democrats want all of these illegals to participate in our federal elections. They want them to vote. So that's an excerpt from the GOP leadership. And you would think, well, why don't they just impeach him and throw him out? Because even though they should have impeached him, not even for this, but for other corrupt reasons, which I can get into, but they should have impeached him years ago. But they don't have the political power to throw him from office. Yeah, they can impeach him in the House and just have that on his record the way that the Dems did to Trump. But it's not going to do anything because it takes the Senate, a majority of the Senate, two thirds majority of the Senate to kick him out. So they would need a lot of help, a lot of help, actually, from Senate Democrats. And that's not going to happen. So they're saying, yeah, he's unfit for office, but we don't have the political power to oust him immediately and put Kamala in there. <laughs> so what we need to do is protect the elections. The main part of that press conference from the GOP, they were declaring that Joe Biden was unfit, but they also spent an extensive amount of time talking about election security, about controlling the border, about voter ID, about protecting the election from the use of foreign voters. The Democrats have been flooding the country with illegal immigrants, put them in key cities, key locations, and what they're gonna try to do is run a game by having foreign voters. See, historically, the voter ID was about black people because we know back in the Jim Crow era, black people were prohibited from voting. But voter ID in today's day and age has nothing to do with black people. It has everything to do with foreign voters. Because if you can flood a state like Arizona, a state like Texas with millions of illegal immigrants and encourage them to vote, and there's no voter ID laws, nothing like that on the books, they can just go vote and you can't question them. So the Democrats are trying to use these foreign voters to help them tip over swing states and tip over other key states like Georgia to help them win the election. So the GOP said, okay, Joe Biden is completely unfit. So the best thing that we can do is try to make sure that we fight against this Democrat cheating, this funny business that they ran on us in 2020. We're gonna combat against that. We're gonna make sure we have our poll watchers. We're gonna make sure we watch the machines. We're gonna watch the count. We're gonna do everything to fight against this. And we're gonna fight against the use of foreign voters, which the Democrats are using to win elections. So we have this senile president. We have a president who probably has Parkinson's or some other extreme cognitive issue going on but they're not gonna tell us. And since the Democrats have realized that they trapped themselves by rigging their own primary, they trapped themselves by not replacing Joe Biden in an adequate time frame, they're stuck with him. Either him or Kamala. They definitely don't want Kamala. So now, as you saw in the clip, notable Democrats, Gavin Newsom, AOC, people like them, they're trying to say, okay, let's just drop all this infighting and let's rally behind the man who's probably a Parkinson's disease patient. <laughs> Let's brainwash our sheep into voting for an 81-year-old man with Parkinson's disease, probably has Parkinson's, to be the president of the United States, to be the commander-in-chief. <laughs> but that's what the Democrats are doing. That's their play, and they're so desperate that they're going to try to cheat. They're going to try to make sure that they win. They put their mentally deficient candidate in office because they don't give a damn about the country. It's all about power. They will put a man who has dementia, Parkinson's disease, or something like that, in office as long as they can keep power <laughs> because they are that deranged, that hateful of the opposition. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think about this. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.